The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. I want to welcome you to uh, Skip and Skip Allen and I are going to uh, go through some of the new uh, features in Painter 12.1 for you today and hopefully get you off to a good start with um, some of these great new features that have come up. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out right away is the fact that um, this uh, webinar will be recorded and I will have it available to, uh, for everybody to view uh, at their leisure uh, at some point this afternoon. So once it's all uh, ready to go, I'll make sure that it'll be uh, posted on my blog, uh, Skip's blog and also over at Painter Talk, so you can pick it up there. Um, everybody is in listen-only mode right now. Uh, and the reason we do this is because there's, well, close to 60 people here right now. And if we had everybody's mic open, there'd, there'd just be too much noise in the background and you can't really concentrate. Uh, the way we're going to run this today is we're going to go through uh, the different, um, the different uh, categories that I've mentioned in the, in, the, uh, in the preview window here, from brush management all the way down to uh, cloning using the crosshair function. Um, and what I think I'd like you to do is um, go ahead and if, if a question comes up that is not answered from the point that we go from brush management down to uh, the cloning, then go ahead and ask that question in the question area. But hold off on your questions because they may very well be answered as we go through these steps here today. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind and, and if, you, if you do that, that would be helpful. Now if your question doesn't come up, say for example we have finished with uh, uh, the mixer pad and your question wasn't answered, then that will you please go ahead and answer it and then at the end of the webinar we'll go ahead and take a few questions uh, and get those answered. But I want you to know that the questions are logged, so if they're not answered today, uh, Skip and I will make sure that they get answered for you via an email. So uh, you, your question will be sure to be answered at some point, if not today, um, you know, later today or tomorrow. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started and get started with Painter 12.1 here. And uh, today we're going to start off with uh, the brush uh, library function. And this is one of the areas that, uh, you know, I'm going to approach it here as a newbie to Painter, somebody who has just opened up Painter 12, has installed the update, and uh, would like to start adding new brush categories, uh, sorry, new brush libraries uh, to their existing Painter library. And if I go ahead and open the fly out here on this particular brush categories, which we see is the Painter brushes, I'm going to go ahead and go over to the fly out and choose brush library and you'll notice a check next to the painter brushes which signifies uh, to us that we are in the default painter brushes or the painter 12 brushes. Right below that you'll see that we have the painter 11 brushes. So we have two default brush uh, libraries uh, by default when we open Painter 12. So we want to do, what we want to do here is I want to add a new brush library that I can start building and what I want to do is, for example, I want it to be my uh, chalk library where I use all my chalk, like my chalk and pastels and pencils and that type of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by opening the flyout and skip you're going to come in here if I miss a step. <laughs> we're going to open. Maybe missing it with you. <laughs> yeah, we're going to open the flyout. We're going to go over to brush library. Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to go down to export. And what we want to do here is we're going to completely export this brush library, and we're going to choose brush library or export, and we're going to go to brush library and select that. At this point, you're going to see a new dialog come up and it's going to tell you that you're in the Painter Brushes library 
If, for example, you want to go to Painter 11 brushes, you can do that. But for this case, we're going to go to Painter brushes because we know we want to use those brushes that are included in that library. We're going to select OK. And it's going to default to my documents area. And I am going to, for the sake of this, because I've set up some other uh, examples here, I'm going to go ahead and select Desktop. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to name this, a, and I'm going to give it a new name. And I'm going to just call it my uh, Artist Chalk. OK? And at that point, I'm going to save it. And we'll give it a minute here to export. And hopefully it'll go right there for us. And should, it's a pretty big category, so it may take a little while to do it. But it should go pretty quick for you. OK, and so now we know that uh, we're back to our uh, screen, our main screen, and we're ready to go to the next step. Now I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to show you what happened here. Here is the new brush library that we just created. And take a look at that uh, icon, because that's something you'll want to remember. It's a little bit different than what you'd see in either a category or just a simple brush. Uh, variant. So it looks like this, and we know that we've created that library. So let's go ahead and open Painter up again. And this time I'm going to again, I can do it uh, either through the flyout here or through the brushes. So you have two options there. I just prefer to go through this way. And I'm going to choose Import at this point. And I'm not going to choose Brush. I'm not going to choose Category. But I'm going to choose Brush Library. And this way, I can bring that library that I just created right into Painter 12. I'm going to go to my desktop, find that Artist Chalk, and select Open. And it should bring it in for me. And now I'm going to, again, go over to my flyout, open it up, take a look at my brush libraries. And there now is my current library that's active, the Artist Chalk. OK. So that's all done. Now, you know, the next thing that comes up here is, you know, I, I don't want to include all of these brushes that are currently in this brush category. Now, I'm going to go through this. I'm not going to delete every brush in this category, but I'm going to show you how, how you want you could do this. There's a couple of ways. You can either uh, right click simply and hide the, um, uh, hide the brush. Let's see, is that right? Yeah, hide the brush category uh, that you don't want to use, or you can simply uh, remove it and delete it from the brush category. Now, I had talked to you about wanting to create a chalk brush category, so I'm not going to want to have acrylics and airbrushes and artists and uh, erasers and that type of thing. So I would start at the top here. And one of the things that will make a big difference to you is if you create a custom palette and put Remove Brush Category on your custom palette. It will go a lot faster for you. Because if you are starting from scratch and you want to develop all these great new custom libraries to work in that have uh, unique variants, uh, unique media within them, then go ahead and add that. And that will really make a difference and speed it up for you. So I'm going to select, uh, select uh, Acrylics. And I'm going to choose Remove Brush Category. And I can just, at that point, start removing uh, the brushes. And I'm just going to select OK. And it's going to remove the brush. Then I'm going to select Remove Brush Category again. I can open the flyout. I can start with FX, remove that. And just continue to go down and remove those brushes uh, that I no longer need to have 
uh, in that brush category, S specifically, you know, acrylics and some of those opaque medium brushes. I'd want to keep all my pencils and chalks, erasers and blenders and those type of things in that category. So uh, hopefully that's pretty clear to you. Um, at that point, um, Karen, let me interrupt. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. you're, you're occasionally saying I want to keep those in that category. You meant you want to keep those in that In that library, library. correct, <laughs> correct. Okay. Uh, there is another option that you can do here too as well, and um, it's, it's pretty quick, pretty, uh, pretty easy, and that would be to simply um, double click on the artist chalk uh, brush category or brush library and that will actually bring it open into Painter uh, 12 as well. So uh, if you don't want to go through the steps that I just said, this, this would also apply with brush categories, it would also apply with brush variants. So one of the new things with Painter here is the ability to actually double click uh, either in my documents in a folder that you're in, double click on it and it will open up right into Painter. So. Um, that to me is one of the really unique and, and happy things that's happened uh, with this version of Painter, um, especially for somebody just getting started and uh, working with Painter for the very first time. Okay, um, now let's go ahead and we're going to move over to Skip now. We're going to talk about a more advanced user who particularly has or, or may have quite a few brush uh, libraries that they have, uh, you know, built over the years. And uh, this is real important because, you know, this is, this is very true of a lot of people. We've built up lots of brush libraries uh, and we're sitting here thinking to ourselves, well, how are we going to organize this all? What, what big change has taken place here? So let's take a look at that. So Skip, I'm going to uh, go ahead and change presenters here. Okay. Okay, can you all see my screen? Looks good. Okay, good. All righty. Um, in my case, you know, I've always had lots of libraries. If you, uh, if I go up to my um, library panel and click on it, and we got a brush library, as you see, I've got tons of them. <laughs> and when before Painter 12.1 came out, we had a problem with um, a bug, and you couldn't put your libraries in the user area, you know, uh, following into, not in the application area under your, under your uh, application, but back in the user area. We couldn't put them there because it, there was some little minor bug that was creating some problems. That's all been fixed, so now we can move all of those libraries to the right place and have a completely clean looking uh, set up. So the first thing that I need to do in order to do that um, is I've got to export every one of my libraries. Now I'm going to switch to an old uh, workspace because my new workspace, the workspace I'm in, uh, has already been done. So I want to switch to uh, a different workspace so I can show you the process. <clears throat> Now, the first thing I need to do, and I'll just close that and get it out of the way, is I would come up here to my libraries, and I would go export brush library, and then I would have all of the brush libraries available to me, and I would just simply click on one and say, OK, now that's going to send me to somewhere to, to, you know, to save that brush library somewhere. And I have in my documents a um, folder called Custom Painter Stuff. <laughs> and I put everything under the world in there. And so what I have is a folder called Brush Library Exports. And if I click in there, all of my brush libraries have been exported into that place. Okay, So that's what I would do first. Now, I don't have to go through and export every one of these because I've already got them all exported. All right. Now, the next thing I would do is I would, I, I would close Painter. 
No, I don't need to change anything there. And I would open up my uh, Explorer, or if you're in Mac, you would open up Find. And I would go to my wherever my program file is kept. And in my case, it's uh, in, in my C drive. And I would go to Program Files. And I would go to Corel, Painter 12, Brushes. Now, unfortunately, I forgot I'd m removed all of these from here. But in Painter Brushes, you would have Painter 12 brushes, Painter brushes, and all the rest of the brush libraries that we had put in there uh, while working with Painter 12 because of the uh, uh, problem with the bug. What I did is I selected all of those libraries, and I did a, uh, a cut, uh, a copy cut. So it cut all of them from here. And then I just dropped them in. Uh, again, I went to my uh, custom painter stuff, and I opened up a folder, you know, old brush libraries. And I just dropped them all in there in case I needed them for some reason or another. Okay? Now, once that was done, uh, then I've got, as you saw when I was up here in uh, my program files, you see that my brushes are clean. There's only the two default brushes, uh, brush libraries in uh, this uh, application area. And that's good because Painter doesn't write anything to this area. It only writes to the user area. And we can put things in here if we want to, but why not just stay with the same system that Painter uses and, and put it all into the um, user area? And I'll talk about some caveats about that in, uh, in a second. Okay, so we've done all that. Now what we do is we come back to Painter. I didn't think I'd closed it. I guess I did. Okay, so if I come back to Painter now, I want to go back to Brushes, and I want to go to Import Brush Library. And in this case, I would go to my, wherever I'd kept them, uh, say, let's go to uh, Custom Painter Stuff, Brush Library Exports, and I could just grab Bristly Dabs and open it, and it would bring it in and put it uh, where it needed to be um, so that now I have bristly dabs available along with um, <laughs> along with the other brushes now like I said I've already put all these back there so you know you're, you're seeing all of them done but that's the process that you go through you just import all of those brushes now where do those brushes go they go now to the user area if you go to desktop, my user, now it's a little different in uh, uh, Mac. Go to App Data, Roaming, Corel, Painter 12, and look in the workspace that you're using. I'm actually in 21, but I'm going to go to 22 because that's my main workspace now. And I click on Brushes. Here are all of the brush libraries set up here. Okay, now, uh, any time you make a change to a brush or create a new brush library or whatever, Painter is going to automatically put it back here. If you uh, move a brush or do anything, the changes that you occur are reflected back in this area here. Now, that's good and it's bad. The problem is that if you keep all of your custom stuff in the user area, when you do a shift start, it obliterates everything in the user area. In other words, um, you lose that area. So if, if I were to, like right now I'm in uh, Workspace 21, and if I were to go and start, do a shift start, 
when you do a shift start, it says, do you want to clear uh, all workspaces, or do you want to just, or you want to return all workspaces to the factory default, or do you want to do the current one? If you select all, it deletes all the workspaces and gives you a default that is set at the factory setup. If you select current, it doesn't do to any it doesn't do anything to the other workspaces, but the current workspace stays in there with the same name, skips workspace 21, but it is completely changed to factory defaults. In other words, all of your custom stuff would be gone. So you want to get into the habit of saving your custom stuff. Now, the best way to do that is to go into workspace and simply export your workspace. So if you click on right now, skips watercolor 21. So if I click on export workspace, it's going to take me to uh, a folder that I have called workspace 12. And it's taking me there because every time I do an export, that's where I go, so it knows to go there. And I just simply either rename the, the thing. If I rename it, it's going to rename it inside Painter as well or I just export it. And this would go in and it would go over the top or re replace uh, Skip's Watercolor 21. Now, when you do that, I'm not going to go through the process because my workspace is, my 22 is about uh, 600 megabytes <laughs> in size and 21 is about 400 megabytes, so it takes a while to do it. But when you, um, when you save that workspace, it saves it exactly as it is at that moment. So let's say I save it and then I continue working and I make a new custom palette or I make a new brush or um, I, you know start a new set of brushes or something. Those have not been saved in the workspace. So if I were to some reason or another painter crashes and I can't open it again without a uh, shift start then uh, I would lose what I had done since the last save. So you want to be diligent about saving, you know, at least weekly or maybe every two weeks. If you're not doing a lot of changes, like you're not making a bunch of uh, custom uh, palettes or a lot of brushes, you don't have to worry about it so much. If you're just doing minor changes like changing the opacity or the size of a brush, that's not going to really matter. So what I do is I try to to save my workspace or export my workspace about every week. And if I'm doing a lot of heavy brush making or I made a new custom palette or something, I know that that's not going to be saved. So I go in and, and export my workspace at that time and just protect it. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can export, you know, just like we did. We exported my our brush libraries. We could export our custom palettes, we can do all those things. That's a second way to back up your material, and you'd want to do that. Uh, but I think you'll find that if you create a lot of libraries, um, you'll actually improve your system, system performance if you're reaching the upper ends of your um, uh, RAM. Uh, if you've got a slow processor, this is not going to improve the, import, uh, the performance. But if you're reaching the upper limits of your RAM, it will imp improve the imp performance. Now, do you have to move your things back to the other place, or can you leave them in the uh, application area? You may certainly leave them in the application area. A lot of people prefer doing that because they will be protected. In other words, when remember, Painter's not going to write in the application area. So when it sets it to default, it just sets its Painter, two Painter brush libraries to default. It doesn't affect the other libraries that are in that uh, application area. So you have a choice you know, to do it either way. My preference is to keep it clean. If I'm working the way Painter works now, I've got all this new brush management stuff that's going to work in that manner. I can't put a brush library in the um, application area using these techniques. I would have to use the old techniques. I go to the background, you know, go back to my uh, operating system and um, 
or go back to my Explorer and start moving the folders and making new folders and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I prefer to use the new setup. And while we're talking about workspaces, let's also notice that we now have a way to delete a workspace. Um, when, when you make a new workspace, that's still the same. You just click on New Workspace, and you give it a name, and you base it on one of the workspaces that you already have. But when you delete a workspace, it's a little bit different. So I'm going to go here and go Delete a Workspace. Now, at this point, you find, you look, and determine the, the workspace you want to delete. And the one I don't use is 21, so I'm going to delete Workspace 21. And I say delete. Now, once you say delete, it's going to tell you that it permanently deletes the workspace and its content from Painter. That means inside of Painter. It doesn't delete it from my folder that I have over in my documents. That's still protect it. I'm just getting rid of it inside of Painter so that I don't have more than one workspace available. And when you say OK, the next thing it's going to do is it's going to tell you that you've got to select an active workspace uh, to proceed. So now I either have to select default or skips watercolor 2 to be the active workspace. And so I'll decide to go to my watercolor 2 and hit select. And what it does is it deletes, uh, skips watercolor 21, and switches me to skips watercolor 22. And so that's how that works. So just as a brief overview, what we've tried to show you here is that your changes and all of the things that you're going to be doing, like creating, uh, um, you know, uh, exporting a brush, exporting a brush category, exporting a library, and then importing those things will do, do it for you without having to go through all the rigmarole that we had to go through. But it's going to place all of those changes in the user area. And when it places in the user area, those are subject to being lost with a shift start. So you want to back up your workspace. And if you back up your workspace and then restart your computer with a shift start, all you have to do once you're back up and you have just that plain default workspace, you just go back to workspace, click on import, and go and import your workspace back in. And all of your brushes, the setup you had, and everything is brought right back in the way it always was. So it's it's a real quick and easy way. You don't have to do, you know, start bringing in all of your your custom uh, palettes and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, it's all done for you. So remember that you want to export your workspaces, keep them up to date, so that in the event you need to do a shift start, you can do that and then just import your workspace back in and everything's the same. I think I've covered everything, Karen. I'm not really sure. Did I leave anything out? Yeah, that that's great. Um, uh, one of the things that, that I think happens sometimes with people coming new to painter is they are you know they get concerned about the shift restart and what would be the reasons that a person would uh, that a user would need to use the shift restart and uh, Melvin had a question about that as well and uh, you know practically speaking um, you know there are times when uh, you know in the history of painter that you know sometimes things don't go well uh, it's just not, it hasn't installed correctly, um, uh, this, that, and the other thing. And the shift restart, and this means holding down the shift key while you're starting Painter anew, uh, and you're going to get the screen that will come up about restoring the default workspaces, or all, or current. And so, Melvin, this would be the reason that you would want to do this. It isn't something that we like to do. <laughs> Correct, Skip? <laughs> uh, it isn't something that you look forward to doing, but if you ever needed to really get a fresh start with Painter and just have everything back to its default settings, then uh, this is what you would do. You would hold down the Shift key, and you'll see this mentioned every once in a while. Um, uh, act, you know, every once in a while in in forums. You know, uh, at at 
you know, Corel will talk about shift restart it with new, uh, new installations of the new software. Uh, so it does come up in that respect. Uh, and the other thing, Daniel, um, yes, this is a lot to take in in just an hour. Um, and Skip and I will both do the best we can to get uh, videos of all these subjects up on the blogs uh, with a little more explanation, um, you know, going into it more in depth. And ultimately, if you're new to Painter or you just want to go further with Painter, you know, come to the cl a class at Digital Art Academy because we've got some great uh, Painter classes there right now with uh, Skip and Elena and Joan that, uh, and Skip and Elena can really get you started off to a really great start with Painter. Um, I'm a firm believer in, in the, the basics. I think it's really important that you understand the basics of learning the software because it's less frustrating and once you learn it, you know, you should be off and running. One, one thing, Karen, the, mm -hmm. uh, the current help files do have information on all of this as well. Yeah, and, and remember, just simply, uh, you know, the, the help files are live, so you can just sip, simply select help, take you right to the website, and you can uh, uh, get some of those questions answered right there. So they've done some uh, a good job with the help files. Um, Skip, while we're um, on your screen, why don't we jump to plugins, if that's okay, and then we'll just finish up on my screen with the balance of the, the subject so we don't have to go back and forth here. Okay, say that again. Uh, <laughs> I was reading your question and trying to answer it. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and start with plugins and finish your screen up with plugins, and then I'll go ahead and take the screen back and we'll finish up with the, with the, other, um, uh, the other subjects that we were going to cover today. Okay. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about plugins. Do you want me to do the commercial or the freebie or what? Let's talk about the commercial one first, and uh, then let's let's go into the uh, the freebie. Um, you know, I'd be curious too with those in the audience if they have had experience loading. Um, any of the uh, plugins yet and what their experience has been. Uh, Topaz and uh, some of the others that are out there, you know, what has been your experience with the plugins? Um, Skip did a little test on uh, one of the free plugins. And do you want to start with that one, Skip? Yeah, I can start okay. with it. Or the, remember, I did one with Alien Skin and with uh, Harry's filters. So I have both. Okay. So, we, uh, but I'll start with the freebie. Okay. All right. So, um, if you want to do a plugin, um, what you've got to do first is go to the site wherever the plugin is, and then you want to download that plugin. And so, I went to a place called Plugin Site uh, Plugins, and it was a uh, free place for plugins. And so just to try out one, I picked Harry's Filters 40.exe, and that's the download file for, um, your, uh, for this particular plugin. Okay, so what you do is you click on the file, and it's going to ask you if you want to run it, and you say, yes, you want to run it, and then now you d d decide what language you want. And this is true for this one particularly. But, you know, all of them are going to be somewhat similar. And you say, OK. And then it brings you to the uh, uh, setup window. And uh, you say, next. And most of them have an agreement. And we say yes to the agreement. And then it tells you where it's going to place it in program files. And in this case, um, I'm sorry, I hit Browse instead of Next. I wondered why that popped up. It's going to tell you where it's in Program Files, and I just say OK. Then this one wants to write it to a shortcut to your Start Menu folder. I don't usually like that, but it doesn't give me an opportunity to change it. I could move it somewhere else, but for speed, I'm not going to do that now. And so we'll say Next. And it tells me where it's going to put it, and so then we go Install. 
All right, so now it installs it, but at this point, most of these applications are going to ask you to, most of these plugins are going to ask you what application you want to install them into, okay? So you say, okay, and here's your little box. Now, what I found is that on Alien Skin and this one, Painter is not a choice. Uh, in this case, even Photoshop's not a choice, uh, which I found surprising. So what you want to do is uh, give it, tell it where it needs to install it, under what, uh, what program, and so forth. Now, over here, the first thing that I did was I clicked on Add Folder, and that's not right because that's adding the, uh, the basic file that you need to use directly to Painter uh, plugins. And what you really need is under Painter's plugins, you need to have a specific folder that is dedicated to this um, uh, plugin. So what you want to do is you want to click on subfolder for this one, and then Harry's filter comes in and we say OK. And then we say add folder, and that will ask you, now it's asking me where do I want to add it. So I, I want to go to computer. I want to go to, in other words, I'm going to add it in the application area. So I'm going to go to um, C drive, which is where mine is. And then I'm going to go to program files. And then I'm going to go to Corel. And then we're going to go to Painter 12, and we're going to go to Support Files under Painter 12. Click on Support Files, and under Support Files, you have Plugins, and you want to select Plugins and say OK. Now, when you select Plugins, and I'm not going to do it because I've already put this in, but when you select Plugins, it's going to put a folder there and it's going to put a file in there that's a, a, a .8bt file. All right, let me cancel here, and we'll exit here and cancel here, and hit it Finish. And what I'm going to do is go to where it put that folder. So we're going to go to Program Files. We're going to go to Corel over here on this side, Painter 12. Support Files, and Plugins. Now, under Plugins, I have Alien Skin and I have Harry's Filters. Remember, you need a folder there. What it did to me the first time was it put this .8bf file in Plugins by itself, and that would not work. Okay. Now, even after it put in Harry's Filters and put in a uh, the eight, uh, .8bf, uh, BT file under the folder, it still didn't work. And so that surprised me. And the reason it didn't work is I'm working in Painter 64-bit, and what it did is it put a 32-bit file in that folder. It didn't give me an option to say I'm working with 64-bit. So what I did is I went back to uh, Corel, uh, Program Files rather, and I went to um, uh, the plugin site folder, which is that folder that it you know put Harry's filters in, and I clicked on that. And this 8b 8bf file, not not I don't know what I was saying before, but it's a .dot 8bf. Um, it had put this folder, this file in there, and what I needed was Harry's filter dash 64 bit 8 uh, BF file. So what I did was I copied this file. I went back to Corel. It's over on this side. I always miss that. And back to Sport Files and back to Plugins and Harry's Filter. And I deleted the other file that was in here and I just added the 64 bit. And when that happened, then now when I'm in Painter, and I click on Effects, I have the Plugin Site and Harry's Filters, and um, 
and I'm on a watercolor layer, so I'll just say yeah. And I have Harry's filters, and I can go in and start uh, using the filters uh, as you normally would. So when you're doing the free ones, you may have difficulty because, you know, you've got to be sure that if you're in 64-bit, you're getting a 64-bit file. If you're in 32-bit, uh, use a 32-bit file. Uh, be sure and have that extra folder under plugins that you drop your .8 uh, BF file in. And uh, then everything should be all right. Okay, that was it, Karen. You got okay. any? Okay. Yeah, um, Claudia and Marcia had, uh, have experienced, uh, actually quite a few people have been working with them. So Claudia had said it's a little bit tricky to do, but she posted how she did it in Painter Talk at the plugin. And Marcia was saying that if you have a plugins in Photoshop, you can just copy the executable file into the Painter plugin. So that's that's good information, Marcia. Thanks for sharing that. Would you copy the executable file in without a folder, um, without putting it into a folder, Marcia? Marcia, do you copy the folder and Marcia, do you have your headset on? I'll I'll go ahead and and put Marcia on here if I can find her here. Let's see. So I have I have no experience with Mac, so I don't know what's possible there. Hi, Marcia. Do you have your headset on? I do. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yes, this was true way back in Painter when they uh, allowed you to use plugins before. And so all you have to do is take this 8B whatever it is file for people on Ma on PCs and just, yeah, just drag it into the, drag a copy into the folder. You don't have to have a, into the main folder. You don't have to have a subfolder. And Marcia, you're, you're on Mac, correct? I am, but I have both. Okay, and and you can work with 32-bit uh, only in Mac, correct? Plugins. I, I'm not sure. I think so. I yeah. The only ones I have actually have put in are the Topaz. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and plugins, the but I put all of them in there. Yeah. And they okay. All work. Well, well, let me let me do something here. I'm going to copy this file. Control C. Now I'm going to go back to plugins and I'm going to delete Harry's filter. Okay, and I'm just going to now copy that file. Great, it didn't Paste. work. <laughs> Don't you love that? All right, so I can go get it from uh, program files, plugin site, Harry's filters. And I'm going to grab that. Well, hmm, I didn't use the 64-bit before, so I don't know. Uh, the 64-bit may work. I hadn't thought about yeah, that. Just copy because, it. Right. What I had used before was whatever they put in, which was that one. So let's just say Control C, and then we go back to Program Files, Corel, Painter 12, uh, Support Files, Plugins and control V. Now it may work with 64. Like I said, I had the wrong one in there to begin with. All right, so let's close that and we'll open Painter back up. We won't need that, I don't think. Yes, it did put it in. Your apps, well, why would it put it in as a plug-in site? You're absolutely right, Marsha. Uh, the only thing I can figure is that when I first did the installation without using the folder, uh, it put in that 32-bit, which uh, and it only put the 32-bit in there without that extra folder, and that did, did not work. So it must be that I needed to put in the 64. Thanks. That helps. You're welcome. Thanks, Marsha. Uh, let's see. Skip, there's a couple of questions here. Um, okay. Let's see. Can you save your plugins into a folder set up as Painter plugins under the Docs folder and have them work from there? 
I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> Donna. Yeah, we're going to have to check that one. It might be right. uh, it might be good to experiment because this is this is all kind of new. Uh, you know, people that used lots of plugins. Uh, you know, when Painter first offered plugins, uh, there were quite a few people that used use them extensively. I never did use them very much, so it's for me it's a whole new learning experience as far as plugins. But and this uh, is the first time I've ever used them. Yeah, well. I mean, so I've never put one in Painter before, so yeah. we're we're two newbies to this, but you know we were able to get them in. Oh, and Maurice KPT plugins um, for Painter Nine. Yes, that's one that I would definitely want to check into about KPT. Now I remember using KPT in Painter Nine, so um, I can't tell you whether it's possible to use them. Uh, or not, uh, I don't know, but that would be one to find out uh, definitely. You know, uh, we'll try and answer that for you too, but you know, you just might want to try it and see if you can get it to work. Okay. Um, all right, let's, let's go on. Uh, uh, Skip, I'm going to change back to my screen here. Okay. Okay, and we're going to talk about um, a couple of things here. First of all, we're going to go through the mixer pad really quick here. Uh, Karen, did yeah. you want to do the commercial plugin? Oh, no, I don't want to spend any more time on plugins. Okay, great. Because <laughs> we're really uh, at, at coming down to the wire here, and I want to okay. make sure that we get this stuff in. Um, and like I said, we will be doing some uh, short videos on the blogs on a lot of these things, like the plugins and whatnot, uh, for you. So you can always go back to the blogs and take a look at these too. Um, but real quickly, I want to talk uh, a little bit about one of the other new features that have that has come up, and that is the ability to load images uh, to use as background images within. Um, uh, your mixer pad. Now one of the things you might want to start off with if you know you're going to be loading an image onto the mixer pad, it can be uh, JPEG, PNG, uh, RIF file, resize it. Um, if, it's, if it's too large and you tend to like to have a little bit of room on the side to work, now you can move it around obviously, but if it is too large it'll take up too much space on the uh, uh, on the mixer pad background. But let's go ahead and start off with the mixer pad opened and we're going to go to the flyout and we're going to choose open mixer pad and I'm going to go to my desktop where I have uh, an image here and I'm going to select it. It's just a simple JPEG and we're going to open it up and when we do that you'll see now that that image has been loaded into the background. If nothing else, it's really pretty. <laughs> we were talking about this yesterday, how nice it looks uh, you know, on the desktop when you're, when you're working. Uh, the other new feature to the Mixer Pad, of course, is the ability to uh, use the Alt key um, uh, or Option key for Mac to pick colors from uh, on the fly as you're mixing. Um, You can then go ahead and, and you know pick your brush and use your brush to kind of uh, pick colors here and work and, and mix on the side or mix right into your image depending. You know, it's a really nice little feature for those that tend to like to mix colors on the mixer pad. So it's a nice, nice option. We can also save this, uh, uh, save the mixer pad in case we want to use it for future um, projects. And we can also just simply clear that mixer pad. Uh, so these these are the new features here on the mixer pad that I think you'll you'll really really enjoy. It's a it's a nice little feature uh, that they've added. The other uh, area that we want to talk about is this brush uh, profile or brush enhanced view. And I'm going to go ahead and select a um, a brush out of the um, Let's see. Oh, we'll just pick the artist brushes here and maybe a sergeant brush is a good one. 
And you'll notice now when I uh, select a color, and I'm going to choose this little update stroke preview, if I click on it, it will update the stroke uh, in this little preview area, and then it now shows it in color. So you can see your preview here in color. If I happen to be using a brush where I want to use some color variability in the brush, uh, and I reset it, I can see what that's going to look like in the preview as well. So just remember that you do have to choose this little update stroke preview in order to see that brush uh, the way it's going to look as you start laying it down uh, on the canvas. Uh, you can also use any of your uh, your other brushes such as cloner, uh, your um, pattern pens and hoses and image hose uh, to get a preview as well. So uh, won't spend a lot of time on that. That's pretty self-explanatory on how to use that. But another nice little feature, uh, just remember to use that uh, update stroke preview to give you a good uh, a change anytime you change the brush. It'll, it'll, it'll update it for you. The other uh, feature that we have here is um, on the panels now, we have these three little dots that are on the panels. And, and any time that you, uh, this would be a better example here, any time that you see a panel that has these three dots, it means that you can move it uh, independently of the other panels that are nested with it or attached to it. So for example, if I wanted to uh, change the size of the navigator, you can see that I can do that without it affecting uh, the other panels that are attached to it. So it's a nice little feature uh, to have. And again, we're not going to spend too much time on that. <laughs> uh, let, lastly, we're going to talk about uh, the clone feature. And um, I've got my clone source. Uh, panel and cloning uh, panel open here. And one of the things that uh, came up was the fact that there were a lot of people that were disappointed that the crosshair cloning uh, was still available, but it made it very, very difficult, uh, the steps that you had to go through in order to use crosshair uh, cloning. So what I'm going to show you here is just a quick way of getting this done. and preparing for it and, and making sure you're prepared is a good start. So go ahead and open the image that you're going to use, the resource image that you're going to use. And then um, what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the File menu and choose File Quick Clone. And when we do that, we've, we've gone ahead and we've created uh, and we don't need that anymore. We've got our two images here. And let me resize a little bit here. So we have something to refer to, and we'll get this one resized a little bit here. So this is our reference image, and this is the image that we're going to use to clone from. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to select Control T or Command T and remove that uh, tracing paper. Uh, the shortcut is Command-T or Control-T. I'm going to make sure that my uh, clone color is enabled and the shortcut there is U, so you can just uh, use that. I like shortcuts. We're going to come over to our uh, reference image and we're just going to make sure it's active here. And I have a brush selected, and I'm actually going to bring the opacity up on this brush a little because I want you to be able to see this a little bit easier. And I'm going to use my Alt key, and I'm just going to click anywhere on the reference image. Then I'm going to come back over to my clone image, and when I start painting, uh, it's going to start, and it looks like I'm in... Uh, I've got some color variability going there, so I'm going to make sure clone no. colors stamped. Oh. 
Yeah, and it will automatically come off too as I start going in here. So let me get this brush size a little bit smaller here. But as I start going in here, now I'm going to have to go back again and repeat this. There's our crosshair. So you can see that the crosshair is active there on the uh, reference image and it's picking up what we're going over here and I'm just I'm not doing anything fancy here I just want you to be able to see that that crosshair is actually visible um, on the reference image. Karen didn't we think it was best to set offset to normal? To be on the side yeah side? Um, and I think it's a good idea and on the cloning panel it will default to what's called offset. Now in my experiments I haven't noticed that it's going to, uh, in, at least in the first try, and remember this, when you first select your reference over here, it's going to automatically show offset cloning and it doesn't seem to make an effect, uh, any difference when you go back to your uh, back to your image here. However, the, if you try and do it the second time or change brushes, it will go to offset and you'll start getting, you know, wherever you have placed that cross, you know, wherever you have placed that selection there, it's going to uh, start cloning from that position. So it's a really good idea if you're just simply going to be using the uh, basic uh, normal cloning to just set it to normal and just try and get in the habit of doing that and that way anytime you you start painting and using this uh, it'll automatically um, you know you'll automatically just go right into that uh, crosshair cloning and away you go okay so again uh, you would just take file quick clone use your alt key to select where you want to begin, make sure, make sure that you come over here, change it to normal, and that you definitely have clone color enabled. And when you start painting, it's just going to, you'll see your crosshair and you can go right into it. Really nice way of creating good, good fast uh, sketches uh, and to get you going with cloning. Any questions on that one? Skip, did I miss anything on there? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. And I quit looking at the questions because I was watching what you were doing. Yeah. Let's see. Everybody's telling me all the easy ways to do the plug-in that I didn't know. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, does that take the place of the X scale 2P brush anymore? I think that's the name. Uh, no, it doesn't take the place of it. I mean, the X, X scale, those are brushes in the cloner uh, setup. That should still work the same way it's always worked, I believe. I hadn't played with it to see, but it should work the same way. And Deb says, you started cloning in the same, uh, what happened? You started cloning in the same area that your alt key clicked. What if you started cloning in another area? Yeah, and this is strictly for, you know, to be able to have that crosshair uh, and to be able to start at any point, Deb. It, it, you know, as long as I click alt, I mean, I can start anywhere and it's, and as long as it's set to normal, uh, it doesn't matter. It's just, I can, I can pick up anywhere. If I wanted to specifically clone from a certain area, then that's when I would want to come here. Um, and I don't, I'm not even sure that this worked the time we tried it, Skip. Select this area here and choose Offset. Right. You lay, say with Offset, but on your, on your document, your target, you need to do Alt Shift where yes. you want that to be. Yeah. So do an Alt Shift and click. Uh, you have to have the document on image. the reference image. No, on the other image, on yeah. the target. It needs to be active. Click the gray. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now do Alt Shift or Option Shift. No, you need to set the 
option. Now, let me go back here and start okay. over because it's, it's confusing. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so I, say for example, I want to start uh, cloning in this area here. Okay. Now, is it that you want to, you want to clone? It's not, if you want to clone in that area, you don't have to do anything. You just go to that area and clone. But if you want that cloned area to be somewhere else, to be yeah. offset from where it is. Right. Okay. All right. So why don't you pick, uh, not that, pick the, your, yeah, the tree would be better because it's a blob. Yeah. All right, good. Now, come back to your target and don't paint, but do an Alt-Shift-Click where you want that tree to be. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. There's your tree. And there it's going to come in. Right. And and I think that's painting. what De Deb was saying. Right. Well, I took her question to mean uh, you were starting where you did the alt shift. Can you start anywhere? And yes, you can start anywhere. In other words, if if you, if I alt click in the right corner, I could start cloning in the left corner. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as I'm not doing that shift alt and I'm I'm doing normal. It doesn't matter where I start painting or cloning. Yeah, and I'll use a cloner brush here too because uh, you know the the cloners you know really help you to see a little better what we're talking about here. So we can just go in and and use that, and then going back to what Skip was explaining here, if I select this tree, come back over here. It looks like I pressed it already. There. Yeah, I don't know what's happening now. And yeah, I've lost it now. See. There it goes. So that's just the basic. Uh, just getting that crosshair available, you know, for you to use again really easily. And, you know, like I said, Skip, I'm still unclear. I'm still not sure about this because it defaults to offset, but... Um, my, my experience, Karen, has that offset works some of the time. And some, some of, of it, the time it it'll, doesn't. I'll go yeah. into, uh, it'll go into really offset. Yeah. And so my my preference is to just change it to normal and then I'm safe. Yeah, but yeah. If it keeps working for you, you'll know when it isn't. Yes, it, exactly. You just, <laughs> you can, at, at that point, you can fix it. But No, exactly. Um, so probably yeah. just a good idea of making sure it, you just change it to normal. And that's that's pretty easy to do. And uh, it's, it's definitely much easier than the other steps we had to go through before. So... Um, what it says in the manual, and, and I think this is part of the reason that it doesn't always stay with offset mm -hmm. uh, being normal, is that any change you make to the brush or you change to a new brush, it's likely that you're going to have to reset again if you want the crosshair. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and so um, what that's saying is that you're going to be resetting often, and, you know, with the resetting, the offset can pop into place. I mean, it's it's just a precautionary uh, technique. Yeah. Um, before we close today, there was one other thing that um, I wanted to talk about uh, that's really important with the brushes. Um, one of the other features that was added is the ability, um, and I'm just going to go to the top on airbrushes here, the ability to actually pick up a brush or drag a brush into a new brush category. And there was just a word of caution that I wanted to um, give you. When you pick a brush, you just cl click it and you can drag it right into a brush category, another brush category. When you do that, just remember you are actually moving that brush out of one category into another. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move this back in. If you hold down the Alt key while you're moving the brush, then you will retain 
that original brush in the original category, okay? So remember, if, if you've just created a brush category um, and you've got lots of custom brushes and you just want to move some brushes into it, uh, that's fine to just, just pick it up and move it. But remember, it's moved permanently, not permanently, but it's moved out of that default brush category. So just be aware of that. If you want to retain the brush within that category, without it, you know, staying there, just go ahead and hold down the Alt key as you're moving it. And that way you can actually move the brush as well and still keep it in the uh, category that uh, was default to it. Okay? All right. Um, I guess that's it uh, for today. The questions that, um, there's some questions that are definitely important here and Skip will be, Skip and I will be going over those questions and we'll get back to you personally on some of these things. Um, uh, and, and just continue please to go ahead and, and put your questions in there. That is is great so we can get those answered for you. And I hope this helped you to get off to a good start with Painter uh, 12.1. Um, there's lots of new additions. I know it's a little overwhelming right now, but uh, you know, once you get the feel for these things, uh, these new additions, I think you're really, really going to see the uh, the power in uh, this new version of Painter and uh, explore it further. Um, so, Skip, I guess we'll close up for today. Okay, I'm I'm sitting here trying to answer some of the other questions. Uh -huh. Some of the, you know, as Karen said, we'll try to get to these. And some of the questions you're asking about now, like color sets and how to make the custom palettes and so forth, they're not pertinent to the new stuff in Painter 12.1. And you may be able to find a lot of that information on our blogs already. But we'll send you information when uh, after the session is closed. Okay. That's great. So I want to thank you, uh, everybody, for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And uh, like I said, if you're if you're new to Painter 12 or you'd like to uh, learn more about Painter 12, remember our classes at DAA DigitalArtAcademy.com, and uh, Skip's got some great classes there as well as. Um, uh, Elena Moore Kelly and uh, Joan Hamilton has a great new watercolor class as well. So again, I want to thank everybody for being with us today. I really appreciate it. And yep, thanks. Munches. See you right. later. And have a great day.